week of Lent 6, Holy Saturday, the in-between time. And all his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted, and he said, I shall go down into the grave to my son in mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Genesis 37, verse 35. Joseph's brothers sold him to slave traders. The brothers conceived a plan that made their father think that Joseph had been killed and devoured by a wild beast. As the brothers lived under the lie, they tried to comfort their father and relieve his grieving. He would not be comforted. Only one thing would turn his grief into joy, the message that his son was alive. That report would come, but not for a while. In the meantime, that is, during the time between the death of his beloved son and the announcement that he was alive, Jacob would wait in sorrow, grief, and mourning. Jacob could only be comforted by the truth. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife and children or lands for my sake and the gospels who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. Mark 10 verses 29 and 30. God's people are not immune from the sorrows and grief that are common to all people. In fact, because we are Christians, there will be more troubles. There will be persecutions. Jesus and his good news of sins forgiven by grace through faith in him will seem foolish to some and be an offense to another. Because of the spiritual leaving of some, there will be spiritual divisions in families. Legislation to restrict the gospel continues to be put forth and into practice. Watch for it to escalate. So what does the Christian have? The faithful soul has the word of Jesus' promise. Listen to him who says that you receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands. What does this mean? Dearly beloved, Behold the body of Christ. Behold the church. Now, in this time, you are receiving a hundredfold. Or do you not, with the eyes of faith, see the gathering places with your Christian brothers and sisters and mothers and children spread throughout the land of this world? This little congregation huddles in the presence of the Lord God, is cleansed in baptism, hears the word of God's commandments and grace, feasts at his supper, and gives thanks. These members of the household of faith also help one another and bear witness to those outside the church of their hope, pardon, and peace. This is the little congregation on Holy Saturday, the day between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the day between the death of a loved one and the reunion in the resurrection, the day between Jesus' first advent and his second advent. Prayer. Almighty God, we beseech you graciously to behold this, your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given into the hands of wicked men and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Hymn number 172, stanza 3. Now from thy cheeks has vanished their color once so fair. From thy red lips is banished the splendor that was there. Grim death with cruel rigor hath robbed thee of thy life. Thus thou hast lost thy vigor, thy strength in this sad strife. <laughs> 